Hey guys, welcome to the third video in the C-Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we'll be creating and doing the initial setup of a Visual Studio projects. There will be two projects in the solution. The first one is the Auto Updater library, and the other is the test application. Since I'm the developer, I get to name the final product, and I've chosen Sharp Update for the name of this library. We are going to set up the basic form on the test application with a button and a label, and then we'll create the Sharp Updatable interface and then implement that into our test app. Let's get started. Head on over to Visual Studio. Go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to put this in my tutorials directory. Make sure class library is selected and I'm going to name this sharp update. Go ahead and hit OK. You see this class1.cs? Just go ahead and delete that. We won't be using that. Go ahead and right click on the solution. Go to add new project. Make sure Windows form application is selected and I'm going to name this test app. And go ahead and hit OK. Then if you right click on test app project, you will see something called set as startup project. Go ahead and select that. That will start up that project automatically whenever we build and run the solution. The first thing we're going to do is set up our test form. So we're going to go to the toolbox and we're going to grab a button and a label. Double click button and double click label. Then let's double click on the button just to register the handler for the click event. We aren't going to write any code in this yet, but we are going to come back to this later. The next thing we're going to do is create our sharp updatable interface. So that will be in the sharp update library. Right click on sharp update project, go to add new item, click on interface, and then type your interface name. It's going to be I sharp updatable. Hit OK. I'm actually going to make this public. This is going to be the interface that anything has to inherit if they want to use the Sharp Update library. So what is this interface going to contain? Well, it's going to contain a whole bunch of properties about the program so we can access those from our Sharp Update library. The first one is going to be a string, and it's going to be called application name. And since it is an interface, we cannot implement any of the code, so we just have to put the signature. It'll be a git. Remember, these are all properties. The next one is going to be a string, and it's application ID. This will be used as an identifier string to identify your application in the update XML. The next one is going to be a reference to the current assembly. So what we need to do is go up here and add the namespace using system.reflection. It's going to be assembly and application assembly. And then another git. The next one is going to be an, the application icon. So it'll show up on the screen to make it look like the updater is part of your application. We're actually going to have to add another namespace, but first we're going to have to actually reference that in our project. Right click on references, hit add reference, and we're going to go down to system.drawing and double click. Also while I'm here, I'm going to add a reference to system.windows.form. We will need that later on as well. Now we need to add those namespaces, so using system.drawing and then using system.windows.forms. The next property is going to be an icon, and it will be called application icon. And we'll have another get. The next property is going to be Uniform Resource Identifier, which is also called a URI. It's kind of like a URL, and it's going to be called Update XML Location. And what that will do is hold the reference to where the XML is stored on the server. And the last property we're going to implement is a form, and it's going to be called Context, and with a get. And that will allow the updater to get the context of the form so they can pop up the windows centered with the parent window. Now that we have created our sharp updatable interface, let's go ahead and implement that in our test application. The first thing we need to do is go to our references on our test application and hit add reference. Then we're going to go up here to projects and double click on sharp update and then we'll add a reference to our sharp update project. Next let's go back to our form, go to the code and add a using sharp update. This will allow us to use the sharp update library in our code. Since it's an interface, we have to inherit it. So I sharp updatable. And now it's going to give us an error if we don't implement it. So we go options to implement interface, implement interface. So now what we have to do is specify the values that we want to return when these get called. So application name, we're just going to do return test app. For the application ID, it can be anything, a unique identifier for your application. Should be the same in your update XML. So I'm just going to do return test app again. For the assembly, I'm going to add a system using system dot reflection namespace up here so I can get rid of this and then we want to return our assembly that's currently executing so we return assembly dot get executing assembly and that will return what we want 
The application icon is the icon you want to show up in the updater window when that pops up to make it look like it's part of your application. What we need to return here is this.icon. So return this.icon. And that will return the icon that's part of your application already. The resource identifier, what we want to do right here is return a new URI with the location of our update XML. Right now, I don't have to implement that because we haven't even started that yet. And for the context, we need to return this because it is a form. The last thing we're going to do is make the text of the label in the center of the form equal to the version number of the application that we're currently running. And we can do that in the constructor right here. So this.label1.text equals this.applicationAssembly.getName.version.toString. I know that's a long one, but that's what it's going to do. If we go ahead and run this application right now, it's on my other monitor, we will see that it is 1.0.0.0, which is the current version number. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will be starting on the Sharp Updater class, which will be the main class that runs the update functionality. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this, and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.